heaven. Emphatically, yes. This is the gospel according to Prophet Dominic. A poor man will go to hell faster than a rich man. True or false? Emeka, a poor man will go to hell faster. You see, there were times in the history of the church where we equated poverty to spirituality. So you saw the believers as they came, they had only one dress. Wash and wear. These guys will not bath. You ask them what are they doing? We are in the mountain waiting on God. They one day I was on the mountain praying. I had prayed for like three, three, three days dry. And I came down. There's this guy who went to meet there. That guy has spent six months on the mountain. So I was there. I mean, three months, three, three days, came back, started doing my mission work, flying all over the places, preaching the gospel. I came back again. He was still on the mountain. Now he's asking me, but uh, man of God, I saw you traveling. You just came here for three, week, three, three days. And now I've been here for like six months. And what is happening? I said, before I say anything, may God take your breath away. He thought I was giving him a, a recommendation. He didn't know that what he was talking, his mouth was thinking. Poverty is a curse. You cannot equate poverty to spirituality. Listen to me. He says that they don't know. Neither do they understand. So they walk on in darkness. And the foundation of the earth are out of course. Then he says, I'm talking about Psalm 82 verse 5. He said, but I have said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the most high. So what it means that, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you receive Christ, the divine component of God is in you. God God comes to make his abode in you. What well, is your God broke? Talk to me. Is your God broke? So if your God is not broke, then you cannot see poverty another day of your life. Watch this. I, I want to build a case and, and then you understand that it is unnecessary to confess negative. Are you ready for me at all? The Bible said a woman who was married to a prophet comes to another prophet. Hear me? The fact that some prophets are filled doesn't mean all prophets are filled. She comes to a prophet. And what was her lamentation? Her lamentation was that her husband, number one, fears God, but broke. <laughs> you can fear God and be as holy as the church microphone. This microphone doesn't go anywhere. It stays here every day, true of us. You can be as holy as this church microphone. Listen, the keys of holiness doesn't open the doors of prosperity. She says to, no, she's trying to convince Elisha. And so, you know women, when they cry and they want attention, she's crying and she's telling the prophet, thou knowest that my husband, your servant, is dead. And my husband, your servant, fears God. Fearing God alone doesn't answer prosperity question. You are not here. You've gone home. Are you sure you're here? Then she said that, but the creditor has come to take my sons as slaves. It means that if you don't end the regime of poverty, chances are that your children may inherit it, but over the Listen to me. Have you not noticed that many of us, our problems are as a result of the sins of our forefathers and our fathers? The black race is going through what is going through now, not because you committed any error, but because of poor leadership of the fathers. So poverty is transgenerational. So is prosperity. <laughs> Concerning you, you will leave a legacy for your children's children. I thought you were shouting a better amen. I say your children's children will come and reap prosperity. My name is Prophet Dominic. I speak a word over your life. Your sons will not suffer like you suffered. Your daughters will not suffer like you are suffering. I open the avenue of kingdom prosperity to you. I open the avenue of generational prosperity to you. Somebody said I received three times. Hallelujah. Sit down. Can I work this round? Are you sure you are here? Are you sure? 
you see, so, so, so the woman was telling the prophet, you know what? My husband fears God. Holiness. But it doesn't answer the question of what? Prosperity. It doesn't. Now let's examine the flaws of this prophet. Was he a prophet? Yes. Was he declaring thou sayeth the Lord? Yes. Was he holy? Yes. But he was a bad man. Proverbs 13, 22. He says a good man leaves a legacy for his children's children. The opposite of good is what? So this man, in, in, though he's a prophet, he was a bad man. Because when he died, and look at this man, he's so funny. Anytime he's going for loan in the bank, they will ask you, do you have a collateral? Do you have a land? No. Do you have a car? No. But what do you have? He says, I have sons. So he used his sons as collateral. And when he died, the creditor came to take the sons as slaves. It, it, it is not your story. No power can render you a slave. I said no wicked enemy can render you a slave. Look into your house and shut. I am not a slave. There is something to be said about this creditor because understand, ladies, sit down. Understand that the creditor has a duty to take. He has a duty to do what? If you study your Bible carefully, Deuteronomy 8.18, God gives you power to get. Doesn't he? He gives you power to? That is prosperity. So poverty also is power to take. There are people here, if they have, if they have 5,000 runs, the taker comes to take. So all their lives, the taker is after them. Anything they get into their hands, the taker takes. So they can't multiply money. They can't increase money. Anything that falls into their hands, the taker comes to take. Listen, and many times, takers are as a result of cosmic powers and wicked spirits and witchcraft powers that have been assigned to de denigrate our destinies. But that is why I have this opportunity that as I combine my faith with yours, any taker assigned, any witch assigned, any principality assigned, any marine entity assigned to take what is yours, as you shall die, they die. Hey, as you shall die, they die. Somebody shall die. Let me help somebody. Sit down. The taker comes to do what? Have you not heard people? They'll tell you, man of God, I don't know what I do with money. As soon as money falls into my hands, I don't know. It is the work of the, the taker. The devourer. That's that's his, his surname, his nickname, the devourer. He comes to devour that which you have. And listen, this is actually the error of a man. This man should have known that it is not enough working in what we call holiness. It is not enough praying in tongues. Praying in tongues doesn't pay your bills. Imagine your daddy went somewhere, they maybe he's going to purchase this motif or this thing, and he goes there, the shopkeeper say, Malagura Hassan Telebe. In case you don't know, I'm the harbinger of the last covenant. Permission is that they will slap your father before they will release him. <laughs> this thing doesn't answer to tongues. Do you understand? Listen to Jesus. When Peter locked on into divine intelligence and was able to understand the deity of Jesus. Jesus in response also said, Peter, thou art Peter, upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Then he said, behold, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Now when you give your life to Christ, the next thing you should be in pursuit of are kingdom keys. The difference between two believers are the keys one has discovered. God doesn't have favorite, but if you discover a key, you become his favorite. Hear me now. From today, may poverty be far from your dwelling place. I, I thought you were shouting amen. I said, may poverty be far from your dwelling place. May your hands have this serious money. Shout, I received three times. 
Are you sure you are here at all? Bible said money answered how many things? Please, listen, listen. I'm warming up. I'm warming up. I will let you know that the God you serve next to your salvation is your prosperity. Look at Psalm 35 verse 27. Can I have somebody now? Psalm what? 35. 27. I want you to project it and I want a mecca to see it. So can you see it? Uh-huh. One, two, go. Everybody. Uh-huh. I don't know what you are reading over here. He says that let them shout and be glad. That favor my righteous cause. Listen. In the sight of God, a prosperous man is a man that favors the work of God. Not the one that goes to Miami and goes to Santorini and that goes to Dubai. No, 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 no. A man that can send they can send money to, to missionaries on the field. He said, let them shout for joy and be glad. God, in this meeting, raise a kingdom financier. Uh -huh. As young as they are, make them kingdom financiers. May they sign checks in millions for your kingdom. Somebody shout, I receive it now. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause. Look at it. Let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure in the prosperity of a servant. Three things in that scripture. One, God is magnified when I am prosperous. So my prosperity is actually an amplification of my praise. Go, let's have an excursion to heaven. When we get to heaven, they sit on the throne. We call them the 24 elders. And on their heads are golden crown, not copper, not gold plated. Pure, so many carats of gold. When they sit on their throne, to him that sits on the throne and unto the lamb, when they meet the master that sits on the throne, Bible said they cast their crowns. Listen, your crown of gold amplifies the voice of your praise more than the lifting up of your hands. Are you sure you are here? Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous God. Let them say continually, let God be magnified, which has pleasure too. God has pleasure in my prosperity. What are you talking about? God has what? He didn't say God is excited. Excitement is different from pleasure. Are you married? You don't understand pleasure. Are you married? She understands pleasure. Do you understand pleasure? Uh huh. <laughs> That's one. Why are you trying to move your your eyes now? You are watching the <laughs> praise God. So he said that the Lord has pleasure in the prosperity. So my prosperity does to God. What does one? It's fine. Can I talk to somebody here? Are you listening to me? Now, a man will do to the bride everything that will make the bride take him to cloud nine. Okay, you get it next two years when I come back again. So what it means is that it is God. God wants to bless you so that he gets pleasure. Hey, are you sure you're here? Your poverty does not glamorize God. It is your prosperity that brings him pleasure. Hear me now. You will prosper. <laughs> I say you will prosper. I am not talking about you reaching 70 years. As young as you are, I sentence you to prosperity. Shatter received three times. Sit down. Am I helping you at all? I'm not preaching. I'm just, we, we, it's a court now. It's a court. 
So if God gets pleasure in my prosperity, do you think he hates prosperity? You see, let me tell you something. Are you sure you're here? Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. I want you to look. I want a maker to see the scripture. <laughs> Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. Are you getting blessed? Or oh, I'm boring you? Don't worry, I'm the one holding the microphone now. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17. Project. Can somebody read? If you open, you can read. Yes, it's on the screen. One to go. Cry yet saying. <laughs> Did you see that? He says cry yet. Listen, it should worry you if you are broke. It should, it should worry you. One day, I heard a song. I, I don't know whether it's a gospel or, but one of your guys sang it. So they were playing it. I was, I was driving my Mercedes and they were playing it. And then I, I, I had to, you see, of course, I'm a spirit man, you know. And I'm always um, in tune with the spirit. But on this particular occasion, I had to increase the volume. I, I, I just realized I had increased the volume. My wife was sitting next to me. She was looking at me. I was dancing to the song. I said, ah, she was like, is this gospel? I said, I, I don't even care anymore. If this one is not gospel, I still love it. I'll convert it to gospel. Do you know the song? If you don't get the money, wait till we get. Wait till we get. If you don't buy the verse, wait till we get. Is it a gospel or not? Is it a gospel or what? I don't care anymore. Do you care? If you don't get money, where do we? It's a prosperity song. Woman of God, is it a gospel song or what? I don't even know. Hallelujah. So I played. I went to look for the thing on YouTube. I put that thing on, on, on repeat. Even in my dream, I was singing, if you don't buy the bands, wait till we get. God punish the devil. Are you sure you are here? If I be a man of God, the last time they pitied you is the last time. The last time anybody looked down on you is the last time. Receive prosperity. Shut up. Receive. Sit down. Can I do two more minutes? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So my, my wife was like, honey, is this gospel? I said, no, I don't know. I don't want to know. <laughs> Praise God. Because you see, you see, I have seen people with great ideas die without having their ideas materialized. Because the wheel for manifestation of your vision and dream is money. And hear me now. The reason why, go to Zachariah again because I want to make emphasis there. He says that cry yet again. This saith the Lord of hosts. Anytime you read the Bible and the deity, the revelation of God says that Lord of hosts. It means that this is warfare. So the Lord wants you to attack poverty with a warfare mentality. Are you sure you're here? Because, listen, the world knows it is only through prosperity that the gospel shall spread. And so the world will fight the church and will indoctrinate the church so that the people in the church will think that getting blessed is wrong. There's a guy, the reason why I brought that song, there's a guy in Ghana, you guys may know him, his name is Shatawale. Last two, three weeks, he came up strongly. The whole media in Ghana started talking about him. And then they said Beyonce had featured him. I said, okay. So I was waiting to listen to the song, the source called song that Beyonce featured him. And listen, you could not even make any 
came out of that song. Can you imagine? And then, this guy comes on stage, you invite him to come and sing, he will not sing. All he will do is to shut and remove his, his pants and socks. And after that, he's paid $500,000, sometimes $250,000 for 20 minutes. And the world says it's okay. But when the harbinger begins to drive the latest Ferrari and Lamborghini, then they are talking the devil is a liar. You will drive the best car. I say you will drive the best car. You will live in the best house. If you shout, yes, receive it now. Tell somebody, don't be apologetic. Am I talking to you at all? And then the moment the church begins to, to swim in influence, then they talk. And these prosperity preachers, listen, listen. Listen, Jesus spoke about money, but some people don't. Listen, Jesus said you cannot serve two masters. You cannot serve God and the spirit of money is mammon. Now, Jesus saying it is not needful for you to serve something that I've already added. Something that's supposed to be your servant, you don't serve your servant. So all you have to do is to see first the kingdom. There's a position where money salutes. And, and that position is when you are in the kingdom. When you are in the kingdom and you are in pursuit of the things of the kingdom, money will come looking for you everywhere. You, you, you are looking for money when in that 12 cents it's a currency. It has to move to you. Can I have somebody today? He said, cry yet aloud and let them know that my cities through prosperity shall spread. When he talks about cities, he's not talking about geographical location. He's talking about you. You are a city. It's impossible that we met you last five years and all you had in your account was a million dollars. Five years later, you still have a million. It's, it's an error. May you multiply... <laughs> I said, may you multiply. May you be fruitful. I said, increase. May you expand. And may you advance. Shout and receive three times. Shout it. Shout it. Yes. Listen. Listen. I, can I talk to somebody? He says that cry out. So listen, there has to be a time where you are too sick and tired of being sick and tired. Maybe you guys have not been there before. You guys are very spiritual. You don't, you, but the worst depression that can ever befall a person is when he thinks he's a believer. He speaks in all the graduate tongues and yet he's broke. He, he, he is, he's compelled to go on a fast because there's no food. Sister, sit down. Let me try and catch my breath. Can, can I help somebody? <laughs> preaching is no busy, you oh, preaching. <laughs> if I don't preach, well, daddy will not pay me. So <laughs> Can I help somebody? Now, this woman comes to the prophet and then listen to where my emphasis is. She's telling the prophet, My husband is dead. I am tempted. This is the gospel according to Prophet Dominic. Poverty killed the man faster than his usual time. You know, be so. Poverty can kill you faster. Many, many years ago, like 30 years ago, I had an MBA star had contracted HIV. 30 years later, I saw that guy on TV. He's still so strong. So poverty can take you to your grave faster. The man died as if that was not enough. The creditor now come, comes to take the children to be slaves. And then a woman woke up and said, enough. Is enough. May God give the singing guys who are not yet married women that can pray. Not slay queen, but pray queens. 
Are you listening? <laughs> Not women that have all the heels and thrills and fingertips. But women have access to God. This woman comes to the prophet. Then she said, prophet, my husband is dead. Now, listen to the question. The prophet says that what can I? Not what can God? This is where a lot of guys, you miss it. Sometimes you think that you can make it by your own efforts. You think that you have a, an expertise. You think you have a technical knowledge. You think you have more degrees than a thermometer. You have there, there, all the degrees, but understand, without the agency of a man of God, you have excused your life from prosperity. Elisha didn't say, okay, I have heard you. Let's go on a three-day fast. I will call on my God. There, this thing, there is no need. He says, what can I? It means God has empowered the harbinger for your prosperity. Oh my God. For your prosperity. What, what, are you saying amen or amen? I said he has been empowered for your prosperity. Some of you listen. You don't know what just putting money under his feet does to your destiny. Listen to me now. Any strong man that stood against your rising by the solicitation of the altars of the harbinger, let that strong man die. I said, let that strong man die. Somebody shall die. Said, I have a work to do. What can I do for you? And there are people, it breaks my heart. When they want to begin any business, they want to sign any contract, they will go on, sign the contract, do about two years, three years of the contract, and when things are bad, they come looking for a man of God. No. Before you start anything, ask him. Did you know, did you see in your Bible? The servant of Abraham had been mandated by Abraham to go and look for a wife for Isaac. He's going. On his journey, he prays. He said, let the God of my master Abraham guide me. Gehazi goes. To take money which he shouldn't have taken. He comes back and Elisha said, didn't you know? Whilst you were going, my eyes were following you. So he's a man of God, not because of stature. He's a man of God because he sees farther than you can see. Now people, you, you, listen, anybody that talks this ministry down, talks, to, talks down about your man of God, that person should not be your friend. No? Were you trying to say amen or amen? That person should not be your, your friend. Because on the wings of your father you fly. Yeah. He says, what can I do? Imagine that you sent you sent your, your son to the university. How many years do they do medicine here? Study medicine. Seven. Okay, seven. Then you do internship two years, right? So after nine years, this guy is in the consulting room. You go to the consulting room, and then you tell the person, you know what, I have headache, I have flu, I have all that. And then once you are still talking about the symptoms and all that, he picks a, 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 a phone and calls the Medical Association of South Africa. Hello, I have a client here, he has flu, he has this, he has this. Will you wait for prescription? Are you sure? Why? Why will you run? Because you are expecting that after nine years, he is empowered to treat you. Is that not so? The experiences of your man of God, his encounters, his work with God, have all amalgamated and fused together to be that which he can be able to empower you to be blessed. Matters about this destiny, we don't need God's answer. He goes to God, he brings down the answer. So your access to him grants you access to open doors in life. Am I talking to somebody at all? It breaks my heart. People give tight only on their salary. When you have a business, you don't tight on the profit of your business and the church was quiet. Very quiet. 
You have a business. Things are going on. You don't tithe. It is an error. Are you looking at me like that? It is what? It is an error. And there are people, when they begin projects, the man of God does, you, do a, you, you begin a project, you buy a house, and you don't call your man of God to dedicate the house, and you do housewarming with your friends. Are you proper? <laughs> and sometimes they go like, well, if we, if we let them see that uh, this is how much we earn, then they, listen, the truth of the matter is, like, like, like Esther, if you bless the church or not, once God has given him a vision, the church will still go on. It is just in your favor to be part of this work. Are you sure you came to church at all? Were you not the one that was shouting and receive? What happened to you now? Are you learning? Are you learning something? Listen, have an unbreakable connection with your father. Have it. I've gone to do a meeting in Nigeria. You know, when you go into Nigeria, they bless you. Bless you. So I called my wife. When they gave me on a room, I called my wife. I said, Georgina, list all the things you want me to buy. When I get to Accra, I'll buy them before I come to you. She was excited. You know a woman? Listed all the... What am I looking for? As soon as I landed at Accra airport, I got a call from my spiritual father. I picked the call. He said, my son, where are you? I said, oh, daddy, I just landed. He says, I want to see you. And when your father says, I want to see you, you know, he really wants to see you. He really, really wants to see you. So I said, okay, daddy, then uh, please, can I come uh, after three days? He, say, he says, no, come now. Now, as soon as I got to his office, the Lord spoke to me. Have you heard that voice that comes and you are binding that voice? Eh? The Lord spoke. He says, empty your pocket. I said, empty. My God, I break this. Hey, my koto, koto, koto. God said, you cannot koto, koto me. Yeah, this one I'm speaking. I said, I, every foul, my familiar spirit. God said, I'm not familiar. I'm in you. <laughs> so you know what I did? I had already promised Georgina. So I emptied the thing, and I, I had to save about $200. So I gave the money to, I gave the seed to my daddy. I felt, I thought he was going to, you know, when you do some serious seed, you are expecting big prayers. So now he holds my hands and in 60 seconds say, may God empower you. I said, ah, empower. <laughs> Daddy, pour oil, pour oil, pour, pour honey, pour palm wine. <laughs> pour everything on me. <laughs> this man just said, may God empower I was depressed. <laughs> depressed. You know, so when I left his presence, he now called me back. I, I went on a Saturday. He now called me. He said, son, tomorrow I'm launching my book. I want to see you again. I said, this guy has seen the $200 I saved for Georgina. <laughs> he has seen it, this guy. <laughs> so I started coming out with, the, ah, excuse me. He said, no, I want to see you. Hey, God. Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. This one, I was tearful. I was tearful. So, of course, I will blood because it is an honor for my father to say he wants to see me. So, the next day I went. I bought his book. They, they did, of course, they did the lunch and I bought his book for $200. So, I spent every honorarium. Monday, I have to see Georgina. So I'm like, so I called her. I said, honey, you know, do you still have the list with you? Still have the list. Of course, I'm a husband. I know how to talk to her, you know. So I came from the angle of the prophetic. I said, Mahatuski, Imahataba. I've gone to sow the money. <laughs> God is my witness. From that day, my ministry blew up. There is not a month that I don't get to travel to minister. You understand? God has opened accesses to me in dimensions that blows my mind. And you know why? It is simply an act of connecting to my source. Am I talking to you? As you come, may the God of your father prosper you. 
Say, may the God of your father remember you. And may he pull you out of every storm of your life. Shout, I receive, I receive. Say, now let me type the message. Now, he says that now, okay, what can I do for you? Follow up question. What do you have in the house? Because there has to be something you have. Multiplication, I did a bit of arithmetic. And I discovered that anything you multiply by zero is what? Zero. Uh -huh. So there has to be something you have so that when the grace of multiplication comes, it multiplies. And I submit to us, ladies and gentlemen, it is not enough to speak in tongues. There is something called the passion of a man. Maybe you are listening to me and you are fascinated about colors, interior decor. Chances are that God has called you in that area. Are you listening? Some of you, the way, the way you wake up in the morning, you are doing your makeup, you are standing in front of a mirror and you are painting your face and you are, you are, it's like you are mimicking as you are standing on TV. Chances are that that is where God has called you. Do you know that many times what brings a man financial wealth is not what he studied in school. Rather his maximization of his passion. Show me the degree of Bill Gates. Show me the degree of Mark Zuckerberg. Hello? Am I talking to you at all? So focus. What do you have in the house? What do you have? You, you, maybe, sometimes, maybe, when you see, when you see somebody's, uh, is, is this thing, is it weave or wig? Wig. Yours is what? Wig. They're all the same. Sometimes when you see somebody's wig, you know, the person thinks that he has really put on a nice one, but you can see flaws. Ch Ch Please don't look at your wig, it's on point. It's on point. Chances are that, chances are that, chances are that God is calling you into that area. You are, are you listening to me? Sometimes maybe as, as we minister, you, you hear words. Sometimes you can put words into, into a, a poetic construction. Chances are that God has called you into that area. What do you have in the house? The woman said, of course, I don't have anything. Because you see, she was going to despise the oil. Many times what we despise are the entry points of our breakthrough. Are you listening to me? There's this lady, I read her article on, 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 on the media. This, all she does is to model, is to wear clothes that somebody else has produced. And she, because she's a fashion, a fashion blogger, she became a mortal millionaire. What do you have in the house? And who told you that when you do these things, it's a secular work? Who told you? There's nothing like that. What do, ask your neighbor, what do you have in the house? Can I, can I finish in two more minutes? Are you, are you bored already? And then the woman said, I have a pot of oil. Listen to the construction. Then the prophet said, go and borrow vessels. Now this was where I had a problem with the prophet. Because the first prophet died of borrowing. <laughs> so then, why would you tell this other one to, to borrow again? Then the understanding came. This guy or this lady was borrowing to eat. But most of he was borrowing, bor bor borrowing, borrowing. I burn every spirit that wants to take my tongue. This, this lady was borrowing vessels. Everybody shout capacity. Shout again, say capacity. Loud and clear, say capacity. Sister, brother, be after tongues. Think. Let your brain go to work. There are opportunities all around you. If you don't think, you can't see it. Are you listening? Go borrow capacities. Borrow. Enlarge your capacities. Understand that this small thing that you are doing, it can have a global influence capacity. How can you brand yourself to have international recognition capacity? This, this your song that you have been singing, nara, nara, eh, nara, whatever, whatever. That song I've been there all along. Is that, is that not so? But who, who sang that song recently? 
Travis Green sings, sings the song and then it becomes a hit. Something that has been there already. Another capacity comes, gives it an international twist. Listen, you may have a story, but you may not be the actor. And play somebody to ask your story for you. It will give you international recognition. Think after you pray. Think. Am I helping somebody? He says, make sure you go and borrow verses. And this time when you go, don't borrow a few. And when you come inside your room, don't talk to anybody. Shut the door. Because they are dream killers. That will make fun of your dream. Yet they themselves will not dream. So don't discuss your dream with anybody. Sometimes some people, eh, if you discuss it with them, your dream will never materialize. So don't talk about it to anybody. Especially when your dream is at the seeding stage. When it's simply a seed, don't talk about it. Because there are people that will give you negative energy. So what, 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 what did you want to do? Holage. In this our modern Nigeria, you want to do holage. See, that's how they will talk. But they themselves will not dream. The woman shut the door and with her sons, watch this now. After you had enlarged your capacity, Take action. Bible says she started pouring out. Huh? She started doing what? She was not praying. Look at us. We pray every time. The other day I was in Cox Staff Ministry. I was doing a, a church in a white, uh, like uh, do a meeting in a white community church. They were all white. Uh, we're just two black guys. Eh? So when they say we should pray, I said, ayakata, ayakata, ayakata. Then the guy looked, what were you telling God? He says, what were you telling God? He says, is that how you pray? I said, yeah, that's how we pray. He says, oh. <laughs> I love prayer, but beyond everything, think and take action. Did you ever see people, they said, okay, I have a dream. I don't have a capital. Capital doesn't come till somebody sees you are serious with the dream you, you say you have. Get up. Go and meet somebody. Just yesterday, when he came to pick me, I was talking to a pastor friend of mine. We all graduated from the same university like close to 13 years ago. At that time, 13 years ago, this man of God was begging me for dress suit to wear to preach. 13 years later, he's still begging me. Three days ago, he told me that he has landed an oil deal. He wanted me to give him connection. So I called one of my sons and I told him, speak to this man of God, connect with him. They will give you this oil business that you can crude oil supply people. Now, after giving him connection, you know what he's told me. He said, sir, can you send me some money? I want to dress well when I want to meet the people. I want to dress. I want to even go and rent a car so that the people will see that I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm so you're a foolish man. You see, 13 years later, he's still begging. You know why? There are people, all they know to do is to dream. They don't want to take action. Take action. Because money will gravitate towards you whenever you begin to take action. Are you listening to me? Then listen to me. He says that multiplication didn't happen until she started pouring out. When the oil was there in the jar, it was just a, a jar of oil. But when she started pouring, pouring, we're talking to this man about your vision. Talking to this about, it. hey, I have this idea. I want to do this. If there are hundred people you talk to, chances are that one person will buy into your idea. Am I talking to you at all? I conclude by saying this. If we talk about God bless us, God bless us. What are we really saying? If you say God bless us, the last time I checked, manna doesn't fall down again. Did you see one lately? You didn't see any manna recently. So what is the manna now? If you say, God bless me, bless me, do you know what he does? He brings you a man. Truth of the matter is that men have come our way here. We didn't know what to do with them. We didn't know what to do. Father, my destiny helper, my destiny helper. Hey, hey, hey. Chances are that your destiny helper will always come, but not in the container or the wrap that you want him to come. 
they had come to kill, they, they had come to take into hostage their, their wives and, and the children and the people of David. David was, was hurt. The people thought of stoning him. They wanted to kill him. And Babu said that as he was running, he met a servant of Saul. And this servant was sick. It was a sick servant that showed David where the hostages are. Sometimes your destiny helper may not come from wearing a suit and a tie. It may just be a servant. Do you have sensitivity to see this is your connection to your next level? Spiritual sensitivity. I conclude by saying this. The man of God said, okay, when you come and you begin to pour, when you pour, put aside that which is full. Put aside that which is full. Remember, this is a comprehensive prescription of the prophet. Many of you have truncated your destinies by not fully obeying the prophetic word. She obeyed to the latter. When she poured all the vessels and they were full, then she came back to the man of God for a prophetic update. Now the verses are here. What do you want me to do? Then the man of God said, now go sell the oil. Oh, prophet, do you say that there is a commercial value in every person? Yes, sir. Every man, every woman has a commercial value. It is not a sin to be in ministry or to be in the church and have a side business. It's not a sin. It's not a sin. It is not a sin to be called a CEO. It is not a sin. But a CEO with that portfolio, that one. Are you listening to me? He said, go sell the oil. Pay your debt. And live on the rest. And do you know what? why, why I said that word stayed should not be stayed? As a matter of fact, the translation from the Hebrew says paused. So it means that any time the woman comes again with an empty vessel, it will flow. That is the mystery of the, of the multiplication anointing. And that anointing is here tonight. It will come on you. Whatever you touch it will multiply. Jump on your feet. Have you been blessed? Was he a good word? Tell somebody I'm about to multiply. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. Yeah, I'm about to multiply. I'm about to. You see, there are, there are, there are potential billionaires in this house. Tell him, potential billionaires. Potential billionaires. Listen, you, you have not seen money. No. Where, where go? Listen, listen, listen. Oh, there's so much to be said, but because of time. This issue about prosperity is actually, it was willed to Abraham. Prosperity was willed to him. When Abraham dared to act as a god, when God told him, Abraham, take now thy son, thy, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, unto a land I will show you. This is actually something only God does. Abraham did and did it. On Moriah, God says, Abraham, for doing this in blessing. Shout it, say in blessing. In blessing. I, will. I will. In multiplying, in multiplying. I will multiply you. Let me explain to you what that means. Hear me. He says, I will bless you. I will multiply you. But there's a way I will do it. Because that's the only way it's done. Abraham, I will bless you in blessing. What does he mean? God will begin to bless a man when he relocates the man in a place called the blessing. He says, in blessing, I will bless you. Now, when you become a Christian, you give your life to Christ. He has taken you from the curse into the blessing. So, what your ancestry, in terms of what your father in Igbo land didn't do or whatever curse that was pronounced on you, that thing cannot work on your life. He says, in blessing, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you. 
So you are potentially a man that carries a blessing. Are you listening to me? Now, whenever you have this consciousness, you begin to approach life from a different angle. In blessing, I will bless you. And the prosperity God is talking about, please, it's not this chicken change. Somebody sees $100,000 and he's excited. Thank God for you. But it is somebody's chicken change. There's a place God brings a man where he covenants with a person that your generations after you will come and walk in that same blessing. That is the reason why I'm here tonight. Can we pray this prayer? I can you. Can we pray this prayer? I have just five more minutes. Can we do this one? Say my father. Say my blesser. Tonight, by revelation, I declare I'm a blessed man. I'm a blessed woman. As I clap and pray, I declare let the anointing for fruitfulness and multiplication rest upon me in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Come on, lift your voice and pray. 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 Let the oil of prosperity locate my life. Let the oil of multiplication rest upon my destiny. Come on, lift your voice. I need you to pray. I need you to pray. Push it for the next two minutes. You are the seed of Abraham. You are the seed of Abraham. You are the seed of Abraham. Can you pray? Oh, In Jesus' mighty name we pray. This is our last prayer. Listen, we have to deal fiercely with the spirit of the taker. Are you with me? She said the taker, the creditor has come to take. I don't know what they are taking from you. But today, that, that spirit will catch fire. That hand that is stealing from that hand will catch fire. Lift your hands. I, there's something I'm seeing now. Lift your hands. Look at me. Wherever you are in destiny, 
Like daddy said, there's another level. Are you listening to me? But until you're able to deal fiercely against the taker, you may not be able to get to that level. But we are praying today, any taker that is stealing from you, lift your hand, say, my father, my father. Any, power any power from my ancestry, that is grounding my life, stagnating my life, taking things from me. My father, tonight, in this anointing, as I pray, wherever they are, and whoever they are, that as I pray now, that they should catch fire, catch fire, arrested, now, fire prayer now. Catch fire. Deal with the taker. Deal with the taker. with that taker. Deal with that taker. By the blood of Jesus. Deal with that taker. Deal with that taker. Tosha. Deal with that taker. Shotoko Bosha. Deal with that taker. with that taker. Deal with that taker. Kasha Takaba. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Can I have an oil? Let me pray for you. Are you, are you part of this church? How long have you been here? Three years. Three years. Okay. While we're praying, you know I, came, I, I kept coming to this side. I saw a star on you. For the past 18 months, you have noticed this thing about your finances. It's like, it's not growing. Are you listening? It's like it's not growing. As we're praying, in the realm of the spirit, I saw, you know, the plaster, what they put on wounded people, like, how do you call it? Is it plaster? Yes, I saw they have plastered your feet at one place. But as we were praying, I kept coming to this direction. And I saw that that thing, the angel of God was removing it. Amen. 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 There, is, there is this money that must come to you before the month of November. Okay. And you have, wait, you have, been, you have been pursuing this money since April. Yes, sir. Huh? Okay. Since April. Okay. The Lord says that tell Emmanuel. That Emmanuel. money is on the way. Amen. Who is that? Emmanuel. You are Emmanuel. Can I have a bottle of oil? This your shoe is nice. Take it off. Let me help you. Let me help you. Let me help you. Can you touch the keyboard from C sharp? Eh? Touch it. Something from C sharp. No, don't, don't, don't kneel yet. Let me... Father, in Jesus' name, let those plasters be removed. And I declare, may your destiny from today experience acceleration in the name of Jesus. Amen. Touch! Oh my God. 
The moment I start prophesying on one, the door opens. Come again. Let me pray for you. I see two white men here. I see you. I see another white man. And I see another guy, like a Nigerian. So two Nigerians, and I see this white man. But it's like, what they have to, as I see these guys, these guys look like Arab people. And I'm seeing a discussion going on that will land you a very huge contract. Yes. Are you listening to me as well? But you need to put your life in order. You get it? Yes, sir. Because the path ahead of you is so bright. But you need to put your life in order. You understand? Yes, sir. Were you the one I told you first? No. You were not the one I told you. I told somebody to fast. Who is that person? Who is that person? Okay. And where is, where is that man? You come. I like how you... Why are you... Are you... Are you having an eye problem? Oh, this one is... <laughs> Sunday. So, and, and I see these white people. You understand? A time is coming in your life. This thing I'm, I'm talking about, I'm seeing the next six months. Amen, sir. Shh. Look at me. My, my name is Prophet Dominic. Don't contemplate suicide. Don't contemplate on taking your life. Whatever it takes that you are going through now, that thing is just a season. The month of August, following the month of August, September, October, it marks the beginning of your greatness. Amen. Amen. Because I'm see, it's like I'm seeing you, you, are you are struggling. You understand what I'm saying? You are it's like you are knocking. You are, you are knocking, but the door is not opening. Yes, the Lord says I should tell you that the, from next month, Amen. you will begin to see your greatness in another dimension. Amen. Amen. Can I pour oil on your head? Give the microphone to somebody. You need prayer yourself. Come. Stand here. Take off your. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Are you married? What are you waiting for? Fine. Stand. Don't don't come. You block the network. Stand there. <laughs> When you were holding the microphone, I saw an angel of God standing next to you. And the angel of God, I saw he had opened a white sheet. And when he opened the white sheet, I saw stains, black stains. Then suddenly, I saw him cleaning all the stains. Wait. Now, this is how I saw. He, he opened the white sheet, three, three white sheets behind. And the Lord spoke to me prophetically three years ago. There were certain things you did that were mistakes that, that stagnated, in fact, almost took off your life. But the Lord told me that that mistake you committed, which has delayed your destiny, because sometimes you look at your peers and it's like some of them have gone ahead of you. People that you were even better than yes, have gone ahead of you and sometimes it breaks your heart. Yes, the Lord spoke to me. He said that Three years ago, you made some mistakes, but the angel of God said he has corrected it. Amen. And, and prof as I'm talking now, I see the angel of God, he says, right on my shoulders. So he lifted you and put you on his shoulders. Amen. And the Lord told me, he says, I will showcase you to the world. Amen. What you have missed in the last three years, within the next three months, before the month of November, you shall experience a breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Do your hands like this. That's my name, sir. Huh? That's my name. Sir. That's your name. This way, sir. From today, I correct the errors of your past. Amen. Check. Amen. 
Yoma, are you listening to me? Are you fine? Yes, sir. Are you sure? I'm fine. Hug me. You prosper. Give me oil. Do you want to use it to cook? I want you to position your life well, okay? God, extend your mercies on him. Extend your mercies on him. Extend your mercies on him. In the name of Jesus. It is done. Celebrate Jesus. Are you fasting? Huh? I think you broke by six. You, you broke by six? Yeah. When are you finishing? I finished today. You finished today. You did it three days. Yeah. Lift your hands. Let me bless you. Father, I declare, extend your mercy on him. What work do you do? I don't speak any Christian. Was he speaking English? No, I don't really do poetry Christian. I can't hear. Music. Music. Oh, was he English? You were saying, I was very serious. Dear God. Music what? He has a record label. How is, what? Champion, that's the name, Champion Global. So you're a champion man. Do you pay your tithe here? Are you very diligent? Turn your back, let me help you. I declare from today, anyone that look at your back and sees weakness, I blindfold them. Amen. Now, let the hand of God push you into supernatural isolation. Tack! It is done. Celebrate Jesus. Hey, can we finish our last prayer? Wow. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Say this after me. Say, I declare. In the name of Jesus, I access, I assess the anointing of multiplication. The anointing of fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus, from today, I declare whatever I lay my hands on. It shall multiply. It shall increase. In the name of Jesus. Shall they say I curse. The power of the taker. I curse. The power of the taker. I curse. The spirit of stagnation. In the name of Jesus. Shout in my father. I declare. From today. I receive. The Abrahamic prosperity, generational prosperity, in the name of Jesus, so shall it be. Come on, give the Lord a shout. Father, these hands of mine are blessed. Anyone that will put a prophetic offering in it, let it be a seal that you have ushered them into a multiplication anointing. In the name of Jesus, you are blessed. You are blessed. You lay down. I lay hands on you. 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 And I activate. Daddy, thank you. I activate multiplication. I activate increase. I activate increase. I activate increase. 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 Make sure.